So let's talk about this new Politico article on Scott Walker. Nobody is making a big deal about this, but I think there's a huge story in here that should honestly disqualify him from higher office. Not that there aren't other things that should have already disqualified him from higher office, but I think this is a pretty interesting angle here. So the title of the article is Scott Walker's Foreign Policy Adventure Quoting Lenin, name-dropping world leaders, the Wisconsin governor shows off what he's learned. Now, understand that they're not trying to be patronizing and condescending, but that's how that comes across to me, because that's just so sad. It's so embarrassing that you have a guy that announced a run for president, and then now the argument is, Look how much he's learned since he, when he announced he was a blithering idiot and he was an ignorant fuckhead. And then now, a, a little bit has gone by and, ah, uh, he's learned so much. Is that what we really want out of a presidential candidate? Somebody who wasn't prepared the day they launched, but then as time went on, they had to, give me a textbook, quick. That's so sad. So here's what they say, quote, the Wisconsin governor, who just two months ago suggested his experience dealing with organized labor prepared him to take on ISIS, has been boning up on foreign policy, and he wants you to know it. Okay, again, they're not, this isn't tongue-in-cheek. The article isn't tongue-in-cheek. They're not like, you know, uh, against him. They're just, Politico always fancies themselves like, oh, we're the down-the-middle trusted source. They're really up the ass of the establishment, and they're a very mediocre, at best, publication. Um, but look at, look at how that's phrased. They're like, yes, okay, here's a guy who recently said that when he took on labor unions, that gives him credentials to take on ISIS. But he's getting smarter, he's getting better on these issues. Okay, but from that original comment, I have no interest in you being in higher office. I think you're already disqualified because that's a really, really stupid statement. You know what this is like? Here, I'm a golfer, so let me use this golf analogy here, which I think makes sense. So, uh, let's say, you know, somebody's given an opportunity to play in a professional uh, event, a PGA Tour event, and they get on the first tee, they tee up their driver, they swing, and they miss the ball. They're trying to hit the ball, and they miss the ball. Now, I'm not sure if in the history of the PGA Tour there's ever been anybody who's actually just flat out m missed a tee shot, just missed the ball. Never happened. But th that's what Scott Walker is in a presidential race, right? He's like, I'm ready to run for president. I'm ready to lead this country. And I took on labor unions, so I'm obviously prepared to take on ISIS. What? Oh, that that's a dumb thing to say. I'm sorry, I thought it was intelligent. Okay. They say, quote, His gaffes, including a comment that the most significant foreign policy decision of his lifetime when was Ronald Reagan fired air traffic controllers, not foreign policy, were serious enough to alarm key donors and Republican elder statesmen who quietly expressed concerns about his fitness to lead in a period of global turmoil. So, even... The donors were like, oh, goodness. This guy's really dumb. What are we going to do? I guess, like, teach him some shit? Oh, God. Again, this is so embarrassing. He doesn't even realize how embarrassing this is. He might be in the same IQ territory as Rick Perry or George W. Bush. And he thinks, it's, uh, what do you mean? I'm just, I'm learning now. Even though I already announced for president, I'm learning now about foreign policy. As the Weekly Standard editor Bill Crystal put it in an email, quote, In spring training, especially when a player is learning a new position, you want to see basic talent, hard work, and real improvement. In Scott Walker's case, so far, we've seen all three. He's saying the dude's in spring training to learn anything about foreign policy. They're like, okay, you don't have any ideas, you don't make any sense, you don't know anything about the world. Here, we're going to put you in spring training to learn foreign policy. Stop and think for a second, if President Obama needed this, what would the reaction from the right be? President Obama makes some horrifically stupid comments about foreign policy, like, when Reagan fired the air traffic controllers, that was the biggest foreign policy decision of my lifetime. That's not foreign policy, you fucking idiot! Would people, would people on the right say, it's okay, guys, he's going to spring training, let him be, he'll figure it out. Or would they have, here, here's what the right-wing response would have been, <laughs> 
President Obama compared workers in America to ISIS? I took on unions, so I'm going to take on ISIS. The Republicans would have laughed him out of town and said he's disqualified. That's it. It's over. It's over. It's over. The same way that, uh, you know, with Palin and her daughter getting knocked up, right? On the Republican side, they were just like, what do you mean? They're still a good old American family. They're white. But if Obama's daughter got knocked up, <laughs> America would have said, oh, thug culture, the disintegration of the American family. These people aren't fit to lead. Look at them. They're grotesque. I mean, can anybody really deny that? What, Scott Walker isn't given more leeway? Republicans in general aren't given more leeway because they're Republicans and because people realize they're always a little more dense and not as smart as the Democrats. How many times have we seen it? Dan Quayle was an idiot. Sarah Palin was an idiot. Need we talk about all the idiots in uh, the different primary fields? Fucking Tom Tancredo, Duncan Hunter, the father. Mike Huckabee, Rick Santorum, Rick Perry. Herman Gain. Oh. The entire party's a fucking joke. But let me continue here because they say even more amazing things. So they say, Walker had a meeting with the Estonian president. See, this is where they're trying to pump him up like, ooh, look at him. He knows Estonia exists. He should be president. Walker had a meeting with the Estonian president and discussed the proper role of NATO and dropped statistics about what percentage of their GDP European countries spent on defense. If anybody votes for this guy, you're a lost cause. You're TFG, son. Too far gone. Right? I mean, your intellectual uh, capacity peaked in, like, third grade. Because anybody who looks at this, you can't take away from this, yes, this guy. All day, this guy. Look, the main point here to understand is this. What makes sense for a presidential candidate when getting into a race under a system that's rational, right? What makes sense is you have a candidate, you have a person who's involved in politics who thinks that they have ideas and policies that would help the American people. And they think this in all different categories. Hey, on social issues, I think my positions are the best. Hey, on economic issues, I think I could help the American people in the best way. Hey, on foreign policy, uh, foreign policy, here are my ideas. And I think we should stop doing all these crazy wars overseas. I think we should only do national defense. I think we should have new allies in this region of the world. Whatever the fucking thing is that you believe, right? But the whole idea is if you're going to run for president, if you're going to lead the country, if you're going to have the most important job in the country, you should have your ideas set, and then you announce a run, and then you sell your ideas, and you're trying to get elected because this is my platform, this is what I believe, this is what I want to do, this is the direction I want to take the country. But our system now in America is so grotesque and so disgusting and so corrupt and so drenched in money that now it's not even a hidden thing anymore. You have a bunch of blithering idiots say, I'm going to run for president. I'm just a narcissist who's an empty suit who doesn't know anything, but I want adoration. So I'm going to run for president. And then after they announce that they're running for president, people realize, oh, they don't know dick about anything, especially foreign policy. And then you have people who are top brass in the party, and you have rich donors go, all right, let's give that guy a class and tell him what his position is supposed to be on all these different foreign policy issues. So we have a system where in, in, a, in the past or in a country that makes sense, you have your ideas, you announce a, a run, and you present those ideas and say, this is why I should be elected. Now it's you have no ideas, you get picked to run by the donor class because they think you're a sufficient puppet who will do their bidding, and then they have to tell you the shit that you're supposed to believe and what your positions are supposed to be after you already announced that you're running. So it's not anymore that I have policies so, so I think I should lead. That's not a candidate anymore. Now it's, I know nothing, but the donors propped me up, and now they're going to tell me what I'm supposed to believe and what I should push for. So we have a system that's totally backwards. Totally backwards. It's all kabuki theater. These guys don't know dick about dick. These guys are just, okay, you gave me money, I'm going to represent you, now let's get me votes by any means necessary. And people realize later on, oh, that person is dumber than I thought. Now let's do spring training on foreign policy. You shouldn't need spring training on foreign policy if, you're, if you already announced you're running for president. That should be down-packed when you start running. Hey, I, these are my ideas. This is why I'm running. I believe these things. That's not the case anymore. 
I'm not doing this segment to say, yay, Democrats. Because they suck too in many ways, right? They're very corrupt as well. Some of them aren't smart. But let's face it, they're smarter than the Republicans and they're not as corrupt. This entire Republican Party, especially idiots like Scott Walker, in all seriousness, they're a national embarrassment. People always point to Iran and say, oh, look, at everybody's got to be vetted by the Ayatollahs before they run for office, how, or the mullahs. How fucked up is that, man? I mean, look at what they're doing over there. That's crazy. It's just like you have a, a race uh, before you get to the race, and you have to be vetted by the powers that be. So gross. And what do you think happens here? It might not be religious vetting. It's not religious vetting. But it's vetting by corporate elite, elites and billionaire assholes who are just looking for people to represent them.